It's Linda McPhee's workshop. Here's Linda. You've heard that jazzy music. You know it's time to drop everything and come and watch the show. So welcome to the first show of a brand new series. We've got great stuff lined up for you this time. We've got Halloween costumes. We've got a Christmas show. We've got home deck. We're making those wonderful curtains. We've got lots of good things. In fact, we're going to use the sewing machine. Some of you may not know that sewing machine is so useful because it really can make life so simple. And that's what we're going to feature. But creativity is the whole game. So we're going to show you lots of that in the whole series. But I also have wonderful guests that are going to join me. And the guest that I have chosen for my first show is my greatest friend, Ron Collins. So Hi, thank Linda. you for coming, Ron. Well, thank you, Linda. And congratulations on an another series. Another series. Brand new. This here, is going to be great. Here well, we go. And Ron, you are obsessed about sewing. Wouldn't we say that? Yes, I think you're right. Okay. I have to admit that. But I think it's so sad because being a man, you can only make shirts and pants. That's you can't make ruffled. I mean, you could make them for other people, but, That's you know, right. I like to make things for myself. Uh -huh. Uh, you have done your, your shirt, obviously. That's right. And you do all your pants. That's right. H how many outfits do you suppose you have? Well, I keep my inventory about 130 in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I love it. <laughs> Join the club. That's Join right. the club. No, I'd hate to start to count how many jackets and how many things I've done, but at least with we women, we can, we're sort of peacocks. We can do mm -hmm. kind of things. And with gentlemen, they have to be black, brown, or, well, maybe, maybe gray. not. Gray. <laughs> gray is also in there. A new color. <laughs> gray. Color, gray. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Well, you know how I like fashion shows. Mm -hmm. And you yes. know how I like to take one pattern and change it many different ways. So, so we started out with classic coat. Oh, this one. This, this one's is wonderful. Just, yes. It's got princess lines. It's just a classic. Mm -hmm. And I'm always amused by people that say, well, can I make that short? Can I make, you know, can I? So let's oh, show, okay. show you what Great. we've done with it. Wonderful. Here we go. It's classic coat. And again, oh, very okay. casual. So if you look, there's a princess line. We've done okay. it in wool. I think a zipper is that's such a classic mm -hmm. way to finish something like this. So here it is. No, that's a wool Melton. Uh, yes, it yes. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very with nice. a hood. Yeah. So again, just simple and just casual, uh -huh. just perfect on our model machine. Good. And there thank you. Is. This is the student that's been helping, or will be helping us uh, for the season, and uh, she's a practicum. So Good. this could be very nice. Okay. And oh, then you can do the same yes. thing long. So I'm always amused, like I say, when people say, can I make it short, can I make it long? How much fabric do you have? Have you got some scissors? That's Chop right. it off, whatever. Right. So there's your seam okay. and the center That'd zipper again. Great. And this seam also gives a nice place to do some fitting. Great for fitting, If yes, you want to do it, definitely. you know, um, and there's a side seam. Pockets into the mm -hmm. side seam. Okay. The cuffs are kind of fun because they're detachable. Oh, yes, very so, good. Uh, yes. Shall we put the collar on? Because oh, this definitely. is kind of, yes. this is the other thing oh, that I like to do is you take a coat like this. And it is a classic, and it looks quite fine like this. But if we then take and change it by putting on a few collars, I mean, does that I kind know. of set the tone? some slinky in there. There's some, some slinky. There's some leather, leather and fringe. Oh, and So let's just turn idea. around. So if you have one coat, it okay. could become many different coats. Right. Um, you know, that looks, looks I think, really good, Lydna. Good yeah. enough. Thank you. So let's keep going because... Oh. Here's the same coat mm -hmm. in a summer version because one coat can have many different looks. Here's that okay. same scene. And we patch. put a patch pocket. We decide a drawstring. Is there any reason you yeah. couldn't put a drawstring? So that could be drawn in. Mm -hmm. If you want to put a flap on the front, yes. pocket on the sleeve, right. elastic on the cuffs. Yeah. You know, totally I think it's just look. opening your mind That's and sort of thinking, yeah. turn around. What could we do okay. to, to make this different? You could add some piping into those yes, scenes. Yes, you could. You could That's do right. so many things. That looks good. Have we got another one? Here we go. And this one is quite fun. Okay. So what we did with this one, we, did, we actually made wow. this coat. And we did each section in a different fabric. Smart. And I thought, you know, that's kind of a fun idea. You use up all your scraps. Oh, yeah. Or you buy just the end of a bolt End of a bolt right? and whatever. So we said... Well, I kind of like this new faux fur stuff, mm. this fuzzy stuff. And I said, you know, that would feel so good inside. So there it is there inside. We go. Well, then nice let's pull this warm. off. So then. Oh, I see where you're going. <laughs> Are you now, going Linda? with this? So let's just take this right off and say, you know, it could be either way. Reversible. There Reversible. we go. Reversible. So that's the joy. To me, that's the joy of sewing. If you can think it, you can create it. And then we put pockets oh. on this side. This one flips up mm -hmm. to be the contrast. 
And I mean, you can't buy stuff Excellent. like this. You can't find it. You're right. And that's yeah. why we sew. To me, that is. So that is just fun. I can hardly wait for some winter time to come for like that. Okay, then we're going to go funky. Oh, and this is fun, just <laughs> fun, fun. So again, you can't find fabric mm -hmm. like this. So here mm -hmm. is interesting. Oh, I again. like that. Yeah, we're going to be showing this during oh, the season. Wonderful. And what it is is bleaching. So mm -hmm. take your denim and bleach it, and take some striped denim and bleach it, and just put all those pieces together. The fringe is some fleece. And some of this raveled okay. denim and that's bleached yeah. and fun yeah. and so all of a sudden, I mean, it is Good just job. completely different. Yeah. So that's why we sold, don't you think? Great job on that <laughs> okay. classic coat. Thank you. So I know that you love jean jackets. I make them. Yes. But this looks this looks interesting. This <laughs> well, looks you fun. also make jeans. That's right. I mean, we've done jeans on the show with you. We've done ties on we've the show. We've done ties. So I said, well, you know, what happens? Maybe it doesn't happen that way with men, but with women, jeans tend to not fit after a while. They okay. shrink. <laughs> I think it's that drier, progressive <laughs> shrinkage all the time, right? Men don't seem to have that problem. But anyway, once your jeans shrink. You have to, have to keep using them. Look, I mean, you've done some work on these pockets. Mm. You want to, you know, you want to use some of these elements. That's right. So what I suggest is that you just then take your jeans, open them out flat. Okay. And do you see this? This is this In, is take apart yeah. that inside. Is it yeah, the inside yeah. leg seam? Because seen? this is a beautiful right. seam. You want to use that. Yeah. And you just take your pattern pieces and lay them. And I lay them hodgepodge. Okay. Whatever way, because I don't want that. I don't want to avoid that. Exactly. So I want. So I just lay them out and cut them all out. Okay. Take two or three different pairs of jeans. It doesn't really matter what. So, you know, these are all different pairs mm -hmm. of jeans and different colors. And you basically oh. just sew your pieces together. And you add so, in the ties as well. Well, the ties just fit. I mean, that's the shape of a tie. Now, would you when you take the ties apart, you, are you pulling out the old interfacing? You could. Or you oh, don't you have just to. leave what? it in <laughs> to give it some body, <laughs> exactly. whatever. Okay. I can justify a lot of different <laughs> things. So, so then put your, your yokes on. Put, make your, your pocket flaps. I mean, this is what our grandmothers did because they had no fabric. Right. And now we're doing it because we have too much fabric. And, and that's a great I just think it's just statement. fun. Yeah, so here's the back. Put a pocket on the oh, back. Oh, smart. So whatever you want to do. The collar was kind of fun. Um, so this is what you'd put on next. You've got your yoke on. You've got your zipper. Um, you put your Based collar. Based on your collar. Yeah, and your collar, you see, has got a little bit of ties on it. And then you'd put a facing. So this would go on. Well, yeah, that would go on there. Yes. Yeah. And, and then, then we've got a facing. facing that that goes here we go. Top. Yeah, here we go with the facing. Yeah, and you would sew good. there, and you'd go round, oop, round the collar, down back to the front. So we we won't get into the whole detail of how okay. you do this, I think, but it's just there's a pattern, and you can jean jackets are a good place to start. Um, the sleeve. This is the sleeve. Okay, a nice two-piece sleeve. Yes, and it's kind of neat if you want to put that seam Smart. right down the middle. That saves you a step, yeah, yes, right? Yes, there you go. Uh, put a cuff on it. This is our quick and easy little closure. Oh, so I this see. is just leaving a slit, and then this will just go over okay. and snap. Right. But I know you do some fancy or fancier looking oh, stuff. Let's look at this. Here. So yes. let's, yes, that would be quite fun. You could oh, do it on okay. this or. You get contrasting fabric if you yes, want to. Yes, yes, you could. So I would going to say, if you don't want to do any of that, you could also call it a vest and just, just leave off the sleeves. Oh, so, smart. so that, that would be okay too. Not enough so, old, old yeah, jeans. Yeah, right? yeah, you could decide whatever. But just have some fun and I think be creative with this. But when we come back, we've got to go. You're going to show me how to do this, aren't you? I will. Sir. Okay, so don't go away, because when we come back, Ron will show us that. back and we're going to show you how to do that sleeve placket because you are a master aren't you <laughs> well you've done many of them I'm I've sure done wrong. many I've yes done many Linda. yes so let's have a look at what they look like this here is the finished sleeve placket it's a one-piece sleeve placket you can cut it on uh, with contrast so you're fabric. promising me this is pretty simple it is yeah because I sort of often avoid sleeve plackets um, and and probably a lot of other sewers do because they sort of think eh. Yeah, well, if you if you really screw up, you just make a short sleeve shirt. That's <laughs> true, all what you do. True enough, true enough. <laughs> and what I've done here is I've cut this one on the bias. That's kind of a nice so contrast for that one, too. That's right. Now, you can also do it with a French cuff or just your traditional 
Cuff True, well. and a French cuff being cuff link. That's right. Okay, okay. And I think the other thing that's interesting about this, I mean, this is not just a guy thing. This is Women, blouses. Yeah, and that's right. Tailored, you can put tailored. it in a golf shirt down the, oh, front, down the of front of a, a golf shirt. So yeah. it can not only be a sleeve placket, but a, a front placket as well. Okay. And I think I'm just noticing the contrast there. That That's rather smashing the way you have this as well. And of course, white is really clever, That's isn't right. it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Now this is what your tr your traditional sleeve placket will look like. Now you can make your own. Are, are these on patterns generally? Pretty well. But you if could decide out of the blue that well, I want a placket in this. That's right. Yeah. You can make it longer. You can make it wider. Sure. Sure. The only thing I transfer over here is my stitching lines, okay. yeah. which are indicated in the red, and in between that is my cutting line. Okay. Then so you, this is, you cut this out of whatever fabric whatever you Whatever fabric. And remember... Um, Bias or straight. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Don't interface it. Occasionally, you might come across some patterns that interface the sleeve placket. I don't. Okay. It creates too much bulk. Okay. You're wanting to make it out of the same fabric, the same weight, weight as what you're doing. Uh, what That's your right. shirt is or what your blouse. Yeah. Okay. Now, what I've also done here is I've taken the sleeve plaque and I've pressed in these two longer edges okay. by three eighths in this little top edge by three eighths. And this is the right side. That's of this. the right side. Okay, so this is the wrong side. Okay. Now you're going to take the right side of the sleeve placket to the wrong side of the sleeve. So okay. it's right to wrong. I've screwed up on this so many times. So, well, so. it is. It's kind of an IQ test. That's right. It? Yeah. Uh, one thing I would mention though, you don't use a felt pen. Right. <laughs> uh, you just do that for the television. That's right. Yes. So how would you mark that? I would use a, a water erasable marker of some marker. kind. Yeah. yeah. Or chalk. Sure. Chalk. Sure. Sure. Work. Okay. So you're going to lay one on top of the other. That's right. Okay. And you're going to stitch this down. Oh, I like what you've done for us. You made it big. That's this, right. You would not have a big placket like that, but this is going to be easier to see. All right, so, so you're going to stitch that. So once you've stitched this down, I tend to decrease my stitch lengths at the stress areas as because well. Because more stitches are stronger. That's, that's right. That's what you're saying. Okay, Correct. so you would come there and you go around there. So you start down here, go up there, across there, and down there, but making smaller stitches. Right. Okay. From there, you'd want to slash down the center of your sleeve placket and form a little pie like you have here on your, on your pattern. Okay. Okay. And the reason that you don't slash right down here is that you've got to get uh, the, corners. You've got to get nice corners. Right. And I think this is the thing that when I first started doing this, I thought, oh, I'm scared to get right into the corner. But you really do have to get you it right to. in there. And if you cut through the stitching, make it a little longer. Yeah, you can stitch again. By an eighth again. of an inch. Sure, sure. It'll work. Sure. So you're better off to go just right up into there because you really do get a crisp corner. Yeah. Now you're going to take that sleeve placket, because it's sewn onto the wrong side, now you're going to take it and turn it to the and right press side. it to the right side. So what happens here is you have a little, a little opening. Yes. Now from there, we're going to sew up the short side of the sleeve placket. Now the mistake that most people make is they press this sleeve, or sorry, this seam allowance to the sleeve placket away from the placket. You want to press it in. Because you want to cover it, I'm thinking. Correct. Yes. Bring this finished edge over top, and you're just covering up that previous sure, stitching sure. line. So now you're going to top stitch. You're going to, so if you put this this way, and you're going to top stitch with the machine. That's right, which is on my next sample. Okay. It's always fun doing these oh, samples, yes, isn't yes. it, Oh, yes, yes, over and over and over. So there is our stitching line. Whoops, I think we have another one here. Here we have, this is the one, this is the one. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here is, so we've just top stitched that line there. So that looks right. from the bottom right to the top. Sure, sure. Nice head stitching. Okay. Then you're going to take the wider side of the sleeve placket, you're going to press it in, and this falls right over top, covering up a the previous stitching line on this side as well. And can I guess? I bet we're going to stitch that. Starting at the bottom, yep. which I have done here, coming to the top, across the top. So a good minute, how do I, yeah, you had this turned okay. in, so that's where I get that. So. It covers yeah. up all that, that under construction. Uh, yeah, that's kind of mess, I was going to say, but it just kind of, so yes, yeah, so when you turn that back, that top has been turned down. Right. Then you're going to go up there and across there and, and make down. a little, yeah, sort of cover up that stuff in there and the top and across right. there. And it finishes off nicely. That is just beautiful. That Thank is you. just Thank you. And if you done. want to put a buttonhole in here or a snap, you can. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. you can make these longer, you make them shorter, mm -hmm. contrasting mm -hmm. fabric. Oh, yes, on and on. Yeah. I mean, you can only make shirts and pants, so you've mm -hmm. got to make the shirts as, as many, many, many variations as right. you can. Yeah. 
Okay. You've got another good little trick here. Well, occasionally I have people coming up to me feeling my collar points, <laughs> wondering how, <laughs> how sharp. You, you know that that's a fellow sewer. That's, Anybody that's, that's right. coming up here that's feeling right. your collar points. Okay. So what I did, and this is something you can put in your patterns too, Linda, is I took that seam out. So what I've done here is I've redrafted And basically my you're talking about this seam along here because Correct. traditionally a collar has, you cut out two of these, you're mm -hmm. going to sew around and you're going to sew around the outside edge. Which one is the outside edge mm -hmm. here? There's, a, there's the neck edge and there's an outside edge. Right. So, yes. so I've taken my collar, redrafted it, took off the 5 eighths of the inch seam allowance mm -hmm. on both ends, Okay. flipped this back. To continuing to, to redraft it. Yeah. And then to the center part, or sorry, center back, I added another 5 8 seam allowance. So the, your first seam you're going to do, this is great. Is okay, bow. let me just okay. think about this again. Okay, okay, here is your collar. Right. Here is your back of your collar, but you want to have your front collars that you would have. Yes, okay, you want, yes. This is a bit of an IQ test, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So you're then going to take this, instead of sewing the seam. You're going to fold it back. Fold, take the seam allowance off, fold it back, and then that is going to come up to center again. Right. And add your seam allowance. Okay. I so your that. seam is not going to be here, but to the under collar. It's going to be there. There. So it doesn't even show. That's right. Oh Great. my, oh my. So that you take your collar. This so is the a strange center, looking collar now. Center back seam, yeah. press that seam open and flat, and then from here you would sew this seam, which I've done here. So you eliminate the, side, the end seams and bring it to one. Okay, so for instance, this is the neck edge here. Right. So when this goes around, You've got your collar with no seam there. Right. No bulk. Now that was pretty clever. That was Thank that you. was very clever. Thank in fact, you. I think that just is. Uh, so you can't make contrast upper and under, under collar. That's the only bad That's news about that. But one another thing I love about this too is that under collars cut somewhat on the bias. So yes. I find it wraps around the neck much nicer. So that would give you automatic bias right. on that. Yeah. Oh, the, the games we play Players and we the things love. we learn. And the things we come up with. Because there's no <laughs> rules in sewing, Linda, that's right? Oh, that's so yeah. much, so much so. Yeah. And I think that the more we can encourage people to make up their own rules is to play their own game. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we sew, because we can't find that same garment out there. We want to do it, and we can have some fun. That's right. All right, thank you for that. You're welcome, Linda. And don't you go away, because we've got more coming up. When it comes to sewing, you know, we've all made mistakes, even the best of us. So I think so often somebody who begins sewing then says, I'm going to chuck this, forget this sewing thing. I think I'll go make cookies or whatever. And that's a possibility. But I think you can correct your mistakes. So we're calling this segment, Been There, Done It. Ron, have you been I've there? I've been and there and done it <laughs> several <laughs> okay. times. Several okay. Times. See, so, I'm a night sewer, and yes. that's not a real good thing because, it, you know, you get tired. You The lighting's not all the great The lighting's either. not good, and you make mistakes, and you think, oh, what am I going to do with this? Yes. Okay, so show me some. This well, is this was what am I, turned out to be one of my favorite shirts. I was sure. sewing this, and I accidentally cut a hole in, in the, the middle front, of it. In the front <laughs> of the shirt. And yeah. I'm like, oh, here I go again. Yeah. What yeah. do you do? Put a pocket over top. Yes, of course. Then and pockets these days are so creative. You could have you, more than one pocket. That's right. Yeah. Overlap another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then once I had the shirt done, I had it hanging on my mannequin, and this was probably one in the morning. Yeah. I'm thinking, that shirt looks dorky. What's wrong with it? <laughs> okay. What did I do is I put the buttonholes on the wrong side of the shirt. <laughs> well, what, sometimes when you start, things go wrong, they just keep going They wrong, just. So. Get, I should have gave up. I should have went oh, to no, bed. Oh, no, oh, no. So what I did is I took... The buttonholes, which were already cut up, out. Out cut, yeah, okay. And I zigzag yeah. them the together clothes. and sewed the button, button on, on top. And then continue. I would never notice that. That's yeah, wonderful. So it blends in quite nicely. Yeah, yeah. So, so then you've got the buttonholes on the other side right. and we're laughing. There we go. Okay, so uh, this is the inside secrets. Okay, let's you see what else. Here I forgot to take a, a basic measurement, inside leg measurement. So what happened? Too short. 
What do you do? Oh, that is cruel. That is really <laughs> cruel. Because these are good jeans and you've done all, I mean, that's the last thing you of, do. A lot of work, a lot of top stitching, edge stitching. All so, that stuff. And with women, what could, you could Well, with them. women, I would say, I mean, I've, done, I've been there, done that. So I say, okay, let's take a little fringe. We could put a contrast one. You mm-hmm. could do all But I mean, really, this whole business of adding a little chunk is not bad. No, I mean, it make looks, it a designer detail. Yes, and don't run around telling everybody, look, no. I sold this, but look, I've got them to no, say. Just you know, have fun and wear it. Just, and people will say, oh, isn't that clever? And I've had this in classes where I've done something silly and i've said to the to the ladies you know that look what i did because in the class i'll tell them and they say oh i want to do that and they'll think yeah there we go so nice it, feature. it does yeah let's see here was some snaps probably bad snaps and when i put the snaps in and you can see it here they're, they're pulling starting, through well this is loosely woven very fabric loosely so woven. it is tricky i mean that is that's right tricky so and i wasn't going to throw the jacket out so what i did is i took pieces of faux suede faux leather whatever yeah, you want yeah. And I sewed it on both sides. That side and, and this side and this side. And I think it looks better. I mean, I think that's classier mm-hmm. than, than it was to begin with. So, so that works beautifully well. Thank that's you. true. And this is, oh, this was, you know, you buy fabric and you're not thinking sometimes. You're so excited. You have a fabric it. stash? I do. <laughs> of <laughs> I course do. you do. Of course. Have, it's all black and to. brown and gray, but it's, but, it's, yeah. but it's, it's there. Yep, yep. Now, when I bought this fabric, I was thinking the stretch was going this way because of the lines of the, of the fabric. Yes. But here the stretch was going the other way. Well, I didn't want the bars going this way. Yeah, across, across my yeah. body. I wanted them going up and down. And I thought, well, I'm going to cut this entire garment on the cross grain. Yeah, yeah. And I did. And it actually worked. The only thing is you don't hang hang this to dry. Okay. Because I'd have a coat dress. <laughs> you see the <laughs> yeah. stretch? So there are times when we can cut things across the grain. That's right. And that works out okay. All right. Ron, you know... <laughs> I just had a sewing retreat. I sew, I, oh, I teach, and, I have, and you've been at retreats. That's right. And it was just such success. And you do have some funny moments oh, at these we retreats. we do, do we? And I've got one on tape. Oh, so wonderful. I want you to look. Okay. Okay. Welcome to the Robin and Nancy Show. We're Robin and Nancy from Wisconsin. We're here at McPhee Workshop. And we love sewing. We call ourselves the Fabric Fun Addicts. Linda, come on over here. <laughs> okay. Okay, yes. We have something we'd like to give you for inspiring us. Oh, my. I better get my glasses on. Oh, is it? Is it? You don't have to worry. You don't have to censor anything. Okay, all right. This is a like creative inspiration moment because you have inspired so many other sewers. Oh, okay. I can't even get it. I'm so excited. I can't get it open. Okay. Okay. Canadian colors. The Canadian colors. Okay. Uh, this is looking like... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, I love it. This is this. Oh, you, you guys. You, oh, this is... This is... This is something special oh, from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. And we put the cheese and the beer on your butt. Okay, okay, okay. I love it. The Linda doll. Now, there's and there's more. Inside. There's more. Oh, there's no stopping. I mean, you guys are crazy. We try hard. Oh, I am. Oh, you are lovely. Oh, thank you so much. This is. Do come again. This is. Okay, you guys are all the best. Totally. You're the best. Isn't it fun, Ron, when we start teaching those? I mean, That's we come across the craziest people. And, and they, they inspire us They as well. do. There's so mm-hmm. many ideas. I mean, they did a lot of work. They, they were planning this, this session for a long time. They are. In fact, I must show you one quick one before okay. we finish. One of the gals at the retreat, Bibi Bass, she came to a retreat from Canvas. And she was hemming. And she mm-hmm. just put her one-inch hem, marked it there. Uh-huh. And then all that she did was just roll it to that instead of I'm marking it all the way along. Smart. Smart. I mean, you learn things all the time from these guys, and this is what I love. So we've got to go because we're out of time, so time flies when you're having fun. We'll see you next time on Linda McPhee's Workshop. To receive the companion book for this series, send 1998 to the address on your screen or call 1-888-McPhee.